Hi, everyone. Judge Andrew Napolitano here for Judging Freedom. Today is Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. It's a little after five o'clock in the afternoon here on the East Coast of the United States. My guest today is our regular health consultant and partner, Dr. Joel Wallach, a naturopathic physician who will teach you and help you and guide you into the proper nutrients to ingest so as to cause your body to heal itself rather than taking chemicals or rather than subjecting yourself to surgery or most uh, unpleasant procedures from regular MDs. Dr. Wallach, always a pleasure. Welcome back to the show. Well, thank you, Judge. It's an, it's an honor to be on with you, sir. And uh, Thank to- you. So today we want to talk about digestive issues. Okay. Uh, what are the common problems with digestion? Why do people have heartburn? What What does the stomach expect of us that we're not properly putting in there? I'll let you take that ball and run with it. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. The kind introduction and, and very well said. Um, <clears throat> basically, we have many systems in the body. We have the reproductive system. We have the immune system. We have the digestive system. The digestive system starts uh, with the mouth and goes all the way to the other end. In your mouth, you chew up the food and your teeth and, and your tongue uh, you taste the food, it sends signals to your brain. The taste of the food is something you want as opposed to taste of the food is bad. You don't want it kind of thing. And then uh, you have uh, your, your your tongue helps you push the food back into the uh, esophagus. And the esophagus takes the food down into your stomach. And the stomach's main job is to break up the food mechanically as well as uh, pump out acid. Okay. The stomach makes acid. It's one of its secretions. Um, to uh, break down uh, connective tissue in the food and, and shells on uh, things like grain and so forth, uh, digest bones. The stomach acid does a lot of stuff, plus the stomach has some enzymes in it uh, that will help you also digest food. How, and, does the stomach, how does the stomach mechanically digest the food? Does it operate like the heart, like a pump that goes in and out? Well, it kind of starts at one end and squeezes and squeezes because it has muscles and your your nerves from your spinal cord are telling the stomach, okay, you got food in there now, go to work. And the stomach will begin to squeeze the food and, and kind of squeeze it and break it up as much as it can, okay? Uh, also, you break down the food a lot when with your teeth, you chew it and break it down with your teeth. So that's why I say digestion begins in the mouth. So you begin to chew the food and break it down into smaller pieces. And so it starts there and you have saliva, uh, which uh, is an enzyme as well as a lubricant and also helps break down chemically, uh, breaks down sugars and carbohydrates and things like that. Your stomach tends to break down things more like um, uh, proteins uh, into amino acids and so on. So your mouth mechanically does with the teeth uh, and the tongue. Your stomach does it with squeezing but both the mouth and the stomach produces enzymes to produce enzymes to help chemically break down the food, okay? What what does it mean when somebody says they have a stomach ache? Okay, well, the stomach has sensory nerves in it, just like your skin has sensory nerves in it. And you can put a hot, like a cigarette on your hand, you'll feel the burn, that's okay, you're gonna feel the burn. Well, same way with your stomach. If the pH gets too low, if, if there's too much acid, or uh, if you have any ragged pieces in there, uh, you know, if you're eating grain and, and the, the uh, grain uh, cover, the, the hull on the grain, like corn, tends to be very difficult to chew up and break down so they can be scratchy and cause problems. Or if you're eating uh, bones and you have uh, slivers of bone and chips of bone and stuff like that, or you have foreign bodies that are in there because uh, somehow something bad got in there, either in the shipping or cooking or, or preparation or whatever, And so there's all kinds of stuff going on in the stomach. Now, then we get into the small intestine. The small intestine has its own issues, but also the liver does like 50 different things, including digestion. Okay, it has the bile it produces, which has the gallbladder and it squirts bile into the small intestine, your your duodenum, which is the initial small intestine. And uh, the bile is designed to help you absorb essential fatty acids, which are essential nutrients, also uh, good fats and things like that. Um, Also, um, the pancreas 
produces digestive enzymes and squirts them into the duodenum. And so you have the pan pancreas and the liver both working to help with the di chemical di digestion. And then the small intestine, the whole length of the small intestine, which goes down to the colon, and you're looking at maybe, depending on your age, anywhere from 6, 8, 10, 12, 15, 20 feet long. The small hmm. intestine has all these finger-like villi in there. So when you cut open an intestine at autopsy or maybe even at surgery, your intestine should look like a shag rug. It has all these finger-like projections that are big enough for the naked eye to see. And uh, it increases the absorptive surface by like 95%. All right. Now, if you eat gluten, if you eat gluten, which is in grain, okay, wheat, bread, around oats, and buckwheat, and that kind of stuff, okay, if you eat gluten, the gluten kills those villi. It has four or five chemicals in the gluten that kill the villi. The villi die, and so you lose 98% of your absorptive surface. And most of people's problems with digestion and absorption is because they eat gluten. They eat bread, they eat crackers, they eat oatmeal, they eat um, wheat. Okay, and they drink beer made from wheat. They drink whiskey made from barley, rye, and oats, and stuff. And so they're getting all this gluten, and the gluten is killing those villi. They disappear. You can get appendicitis when it gets really severe. Your appendix. A little kid might be three, four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve years old to get appendicitis, and if the appendix ruptures, then they go in and do emergency surgery. It's a big hoo ha and take it out. But that happened because the kid was eating oatmeal for breakfast every morning, or eating Cheerios for breakfast every morning, eating Wheaties for breakfast every morning. And mm -hmm. the, the gluten in the grains were killing those villi, including what goes on in the, in the um, appendix, okay? And then the colon squeezes the food as it comes out of the small intestine into the colon um, and, and, and moves it down the track, if you will. But also, it begins to absorb things that you didn't absorb in the small intestine. The small intestine does about 80% of the absorption, maybe 90%. But there is a small amount of absorption in the colon, primarily fluids and liquids, which have a lot of things in solution and suspension, and so they're being absorbed by the colon. And then it forms a bolus, like a, you know your, your bowel movement, um, uh, like a, it should kind of look like a hot dog kind of thing. And, right. Okay, and it comes out. And it goes into the septic tank or the sewer or whatever. Now, this whole system, um, all mammals have the same symptom, whether you're an elephant or a um, giraffe or a lion, tiger, or bear, a dog, a cat, all have the same systems as we do. Now, some of them have four stomachs. We only have one. But whether you have four stomachs or one stomach, the whole system kind of works the same. Starts in the mouth, goes all the way out the other end. And if you're having troubles with blockages, it could be something as simple as um, you're not getting enough fiber, okay, which you get uh, in grains. And, and the Asians do a very good job. Uh, the Asians, of course, uh, they um, eat rice, which don't have gluten in them. Rice does not have gluten in them, okay? Potatoes, sweet potatoes, white potatoes do not have gluten in them. All right, and you have carrots and tomatoes and onions and things like that do not have gluten in them. And they help move things along mm -hmm, and help you digest. And, and this is why we have uh, the ultimate enzymes. We call it the gallbladder in a bottle because we do collect bile from the, from the um, slaughterhouse where they kill cows and uh, calves and stuff like that uh, for food. We take their gallbladders, we dry the bile, and we put bile in our enzymes. I think we're the only company that puts bile in our enzymes, so you're getting a complete digestive thing uh, with the with the um, stomach acid, uh, with the bile, and so forth, and enzymes, and so forth. And so I really like our enzymes. It take a, say let, one let or two me, of those. Let me ask you. Let me ask you about a uh, common problem that a lot of people had. I, I had it before I lost a lot of weight. Okay. That is acid reflux. What mm -hmm. what causes sometimes called GERD, G E R D? Mm -hmm. What causes acid reflux, and what's the best way to address acid reflux? Okay, well, the most common way that acid reflux occurs is when people listen to their doctor and stop using salt. Salt is required by every cell in your body, but it's really absolutely necessary for digestion because uh, you make hydrochloric acid in your stomach from sodium chloride. You need the sodium chloride to make stomach acid. So if you're avoiding salt because your doctor said avoid salt, you're going to get high blood pressure if you use salt. And people listen to their doctor and they avoid salt. 
Well, guess what? You're going to get GERD <laughs> because you're not making stomach acid. You can't digest food. And so they start fermenting in there. And it's the fermentation of the food causes all this gas and the GERD and the belching and burping and bloating and all that kind of stuff when you're listening to the doctor and giving up salt. Salt was the first supplement um, that people used to make thousands of years ago. And they would boil seawater and take it inland and sell it. And it had not only sodium chloride, but it had all the sea minerals in there, including iodine. So when people would have goiter and things like that, they would bring them that sea salt and they would give it to them, or not give it to them, but they'd sell it to them or trade for it. And uh, they would uh, solve their problems with their thyroid because they're getting iodine. They'd solve their digestion problems because they're getting the, the sodium chloride in the sea salt. Uh, so they could uh, produce stomach acid to actually do the digestive stuff going on. All right. When so you, you have when you have GERD, mm -hmm. I forget well, what does GERD stand for? Gastrointestinal reflux disease. Okay. When you have gastrointestinal reflux disease, does that mean there's a problem with the sphincter muscle at the top of the stomach, or does it mean just that there's a um, fermentation in the belly that's pushing the acid up? Okay, it's fermentation in the belly, okay? Because people avoid salt, because doctors tell them to avoid salt. And GERD didn't occur until doctors started telling people to avoid salt, okay? Um, and so it's one of those things where this is, the, the digestive system is very simple. And of course, it, it's primarily muscle and glands. It's, it's, the pancreas is a very interesting part of the digestive system. It produces a hormone, insulin, in the islands of Langerhan, but it also produces enzymes, which goes into the, um, which go, of course, um, the insulin goes into your bloodstream, okay, to go to all over the place so you can um, help uh, with your blood sugar. But your, but the um, uh, enzymes that are produced by the cells in the pancreas go into your intestines and help digest food. All right. So what remedy should there be if you have GERD aside from adding salt to your food? And what can you do to add salt? Does salt actually cause high blood pressure? Do MDs know that when they tell you you have high blood pressure, stop taking salt? Um, salt does not cause high blood pressure. And we have a seasoned salt, which is, comes from the ocean coast of Australia. <clears throat> we we uh, take this uh, water from Australia, which is clean, has no pollutants in it. We boil the water off and the salt has all these various minerals from the, the ocean. We had a few um, seasonings, including black pepper. You can get it without the black pepper. I like it with the black pepper. And I, uh, I use about a half a teaspoon with each meal. Okay. And I'm 83 years old, going on 84, and I don't have any high blood pressure or digestion problems or GERD or reflux or any of that kind of stuff because, you know, I take my 90 essential nutrients and then I also add the seasoned salt from Australia. That's one of our great products. And of course, I also take the ultimate enzymes. I take two of those with each meal because I want the bile uh, just in case my liver's not doing its job, but I assume my liver's doing its job because I don't have any problems with my liver. And uh, the liver has all kinds of other things in, in addition to making um, in addition to making bile to absorb um, fatty acids um, into your bloodstream, into your liver, and so forth, um, the liver also uh, breaks down uh, proteins into amino acids. It stores good fats in the liver and so forth. The liver is a very, very important organ. It does many, many great things. Let me ask you, now you and I have talked about this off air, but I want you to talk to me about it on air, mm -hmm. about carbonated drinks. Now, for years, I was drinking carbonated water with dinner. So just plain carbonated water. San Pellegrino, the, the famous Italian natural springs that is bottled and mm -hmm. very expensive, shipped to the United States. You can get it in any good restaurant. Okay. You advised, carbonated me, you advised me to stop drinking carbonated water. Why? Yes. Okay. Well, carbonation neutralizes your stomach acid. Well, my doctor says I should alkalize myself. All my hippie friends tell me to alkalize myself. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, you do not want to be drinking carbonated drinks. I don't care if they're very expensive ones. You don't want them. 
All right, so I'm not talking about Coca-Cola, which has syrup and sugar and all that in it. I'm just talking about plain water with nothing in it but carbonation. So the carbonation neutralizes the stomach acid. That means it's neutralizing the good acids, the good acids that the stomach is producing in order to to commence or, or continue the digestion process. And you will and you will get GERD and you will die early. Now, let me tell you, have you ever heard of Red Bull? Yes. The okay, product so Red Bull? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, one of the co-founders four or five days ago just died at age 78. And he bragged he drank 10 cans of Red Bull every day for 25 years. And he died at 78. Now, they haven't released his cause of death yet. But I, I have very high suspicions because he's drinking all that carbonated drink. Okay. Now, I went and I looked at the details of the formula of Red Bull. I had never done that before, but I went and did it. Well, Red Bull has one mineral in it, magnesium. It has all the B vitamins. It has sugar and caffeine in it. That's it. Our sports drink, okay, has 100 nutrients in it, has 78 minerals in it. 25 vitamin amino acids. Okay. But when no we sugar, have, no sugar and no carbonation. <laughs> okay. And uh, we do have canisters with have no carbonation in them. Okay. And um, so there's 36 servings in here. We actually have a box. I don't think I have one on my desk here. We have a box of the sticks that have 30 servings in there, no carbonation. And we have the cans, which are my favorite. We have 12 cans in a case and same formula, except that it's carbonated. So I pop the top. Okay. I pop it open. I got to do it here at my desk. I'll pour it all over the place. But uh, I pop the top on two of them every night before I go to bed, put them in the ice box. So by morning, when I wake up, all the carbonation has off gas. It's flat. And so I'll have one of these with breakfast and I'll have one at lunch or maybe an hour after lunch, depending on my schedule. Okay. And so, um, and of course, it, it was invented for a guy by the name of Theo Ratliff, one of our great guys. He was a basketball player for the um, Atlanta Hawks, and he was only 24 years old. And he was drinking all the colas and all that kind of stuff. And he had bone to bone arthritis uh, in his knees. He had his cartilage slipped off his hip. He fractured his shooting arm wrist, his right wrist, and they took away his $30 million contract. And a pastor there, a Pastor Creflo Dollar, um, in uh, Atlanta, introduced me to him. We came up with our healthy bone and joint pack, okay, for Theo Ratliff. And three months later, he gets his old job back because we rebuilt him with the healthy, it's had the 90 essential nutrients, okay, including the glucogel, which was our collagen back. That was our first collagen project, a uh, product. All excuse right. me. And so we let, me, got, let me just stop you. Let me just stop you for a second. If someone is suffering from any kind of a digestive problem, and they go to judginghealth.com. They can navigate through and find what they should purchase and what they should ingest. That is correct. And the salt that you sell contains not only the, the value of salt, but it also has other minerals in it as well. It has over 75 minerals in here in the salt, including the sodium chloride. It has 75 minerals in there, okay, because the ocean is full of it. Okay, the ocean has all these minerals, and that's why uh, there's such things, you know, as um, all these various places where all these animals, you know, live in the ocean, and um, um, because it's such a wealth of nutrition. Okay. Last series of uh, questions. What about foods that we claim have a lot of acid in the food, like, say, tomatoes? Do, do they make things worse for the uh, digestive system? Or should we all be able to eat them? No, you should. Everybody should be able to eat tomatoes. Uh, everybody should be able to eat onions. Everybody should be able to eat beets. Everybody should be able to um, uh, eat uh, cauliflower and those kinds of things. Um, so yeah, that's not an issue. Uh, you can eat fruit. You can eat uh, sugar from berries and things like that. But we're not talking about white sugar, okay? Uh, sort of thing. We're talking about the the sugar that comes in berries and strawberries and cherries and apples. Remember the old saying, an apple a day keeps a doctor away. When people would get constipation and, and GERD and reflux and all that kind of stuff, they eat an apple and all their clinical problems would go away in a couple of days or so. Eat an apple a day keeps a doctor away. And that's why they said that. Dr. Wallach, it is always a pleasure. It's always informative. I can see 
from the emails that our fans love you and they love your uh, explanations. Everyone knows that Judging Freedom is partnered with Judging Health. If you go there, you'll be able to find over 5,000 products, minerals, nutrients, proteins, and vitamins that can help you self-diagnose and address nearly all your ailments without going to a doctor, without taking uh, chemicals. Dr. Wallach, always a pleasure. Until the next time, my friend. Well, thank you, sir. You get an A plus as usual. Uh, you're 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 a quick um, um, brain. You have a quick mind. You understand all this. I'm so very proud to be associated with you. God bless you, and God bless you so much for helping so many people. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Wallach. Until next week, Judge Napolitano for Judging Freedom.